I got to tell you the truth. Um, I think what we're seeing right now is what I've been telling you for the last, I don't know, five years since I've had an audience. We don't live in a country. We live in the United Corporations of America. It's disgusting. Uh, we're about to hit 70,000 deaths uh, in America from COVID-19. We just had, I believe on Thursday, the deadliest day we've had. You know, I know some people are making arguments. Jordan, don't shut down the whole country because a few states um, are, uh, have high concentrations of COVID. Um, I explained yesterday why this isn't just an isolated few states and every state affects the entire nation, even states that have lower uh, COVID-19 positive cases. So I'm not gonna ex re-explain it, uh, but what's amazing to me is as we just had the highest uh, positive rate and now projections uh, from Trump's own administration are citing that the daily death toll will reach 3,000 a day by June 1st, so like less than a month from now, that the cases originally, they said 70,000 people were gonna die in America. Now they are basically doubling that to 130,000 people may die as far as projections. Uh, and I was just watching Sanjay Gupta on CNN. He says he thinks 130,000 deaths is setting it too low. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I understand the economic pain out there, but I don't understand why any governors would be reopening societies and reopening states. It's a nice buzzword. Uh, it's, it's, it's a nice sentiment to get back to normal, to tell you the truth. I'm feeling a little down. I'm sure you're feeling a little down. I'm out of our, like, you know, what keeps me uh, mentally healthy besides just, you know, uh, my wonderful girlfriend and friends and family, which I haven't been able to see, uh, is breaking up the monotony. Like, I like traveling. I like covering things in the field. That's what gives me life. I can't do that right now. So that's kind of put me in a rut because I'm basically in the apartment constantly. Could be worse, obviously. Uh, I'm not dead, thank God, and a lot of people are dying. But I I'm looking at these projections. As soon as they start reopening, and they're already doing it, the beaches, the parks, barber, barber salon, uh, barbers, hair salons, restaurants, you could socially distance till you're blue in the face. This is a highly deadly virus that is not even close to being under control and you're gonna reopen society? The reason it's so insane is twofold. Number one, more people are going to die that than could have been saved by this. And number two, it's actually going to keep the economy closed longer. Why this is insane is these projections are that it's gonna double to 130,000 Americans dead CNN's expert says that's too low. And you are now basically giving the green light for people to congregate. 25 to 30% of the cases are asymptomatic. So you have asymptomatic going, people going out there because human psychology, I don't want to be cramped up anymore. And their willingness to take that risk is going to affect me, you, if you're not willing to take that risk. Because my girlfriend and I, we have to go to the supermarket. We went yesterday. We're, we're, we're married. We were wearing masks. We want to walk every day because mentally you can't be in the apartment constantly. But what's incredible is this notion of reopening the economy. By doing this, by doing what they're doing, you're going to end up closing the economy again because we're just going to be back to where we started. You're going to have such an increase of cases. This is not my opinion. This is just the course of the virus. You're going to have such an influx of cases that you're going to have governors uh, doing stay at home orders again. You might have Trump, depending on what his poll numbers are, might do stay at home orders again. Use the influx and the increase in positive cases to say it's too risky right now to, to choose a new leader. Kind of what Bush did in 2004. You know, we can't reelect John Kerry right now. We're at war. 
And Trump is saying we're, we're at war against the invisible enemy. With all of this madness, I need to ask, um, you know, why, again, I, I don't want to make this about Bernie or be bashing Bernie, because it's not just Bernie, but we have progressives putting forth strong legislation, but we don't have progressives organizing the troops for this legislation. Right now, it feels like we have progressives tweeting of what should be, Bernie, Ro Khanna. Uh, we have progressives doing live streams like Bernie, AOC, Pramila Jayapal, Talib, but they're not exercising their power, and I'll tell you why. Uh, Ro Khanna and Bernie Sanders put forth a $75 billion bill for emergency manufacturing of PPE COVID-19 testing. Quote, it's been months, it's been three months, but somehow the Trump administration continues to drag its feet in ramping up the production of critical testing and protective equipment that our healthcare uh, industry are begging for. Bernie Sanders and Ro Khanna on Monday introduced legislation uh, to ensure healthcare providers have enough medical equipment and COVID-19 tests, demanding that the federal government dramatically step up its response to the coronavirus pandemic, rather than focusing on getting people back to work as soon as possible. The Emergency Medical Supplies Procurement Act would d dedicate $75 billion to the effort, allowing the government to purchase or manufacture supplies, including N95 respirators, surgical gowns, ventilators, testing kits, and other badly needed medical equipment, as well as vaccines and treatments for COVID-19. Uh, Bernie tweeted, there is no excuse for medical workers in the richest country on earth to lack masks, gloves, ga gowns, and tests. If Trump won't act, Congress must. Ro Khanna and I are introducing legislation to rapidly manufacture all the medical equipment we need. So, no criticism of the bill. It's a good bill. My criticism is, what about the rest? Uh, we know uh, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar uh, of Minnesota put, put forth a bill that would cancel rent and mortgage payments for the duration of the crisis. The Congressional Rescue Bill suspended evictions for federally backed rentals, though some building owners are not following the law. A number of cities and states have also imposed eviction moratoriums, and thousands of private businesses, landlords, real estate investors, banks, housing trusts, are working out provisions to cut or delay tenants and mortgage holders' bills. Canceling rent, radical though it sounds, would help low-income families keep their head above water, stabilizing the housing market and reducing the depth of the recession. Uh, oh, Congresswoman Omar's bill is co-sponsored in the House by AOC, Rashida Tlaib, Ayanna Presley, Pramila Jayapal, Mark Pocan, Ver Veronica Escobar, uh, G Jesus Ch Chuy Garcia, and Grace Meng. But just putting forth bills, just putting forth tweets is not enough right now. Obviously, we know Bernie Sanders and AOC and Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar and Ro Khanna, if they ran the country, if they had the majority, if Bernie were president, these things would be already happening. But I don't know where the Bernie Sanders is that shamed Jeff Bezos into doing the right thing because the same principle is there. Bernie Sanders didn't get, Bernie Sanders and, his, and activists did not get Jeff Bezos to raise the minimum wage at Amazon through asking nicely, just by tweeting about it. They did it by constant, repetitive shaming. They did it by digital, social media, in-person protests, and constant, repet repetitive shaming. Now, I totally get it. Bernie Sanders has been running for president for the last five years. I could totally understand if he's a little tired and he wants to leave it to the new generation to do the damn thing. Bernie, I get it. I want to know, and I asked David Sirota about this, which you'll, you'll see. Bernie rightly criticized President Obama for getting into the White House. I mean, there's plenty to criticize Obama about. Getting into the White House and leaving his army, his digital army, his volunteer army, at the altar, he left his massive email list, he left his massive organization, his massive volunteers, the young people that he had organized and inspired, he left them at the altar to allow Citigroup and Wall Street and Rahm Emanuel to run things. I'm not comparing Bernie to uh, Obama, and Bernie's not president, obviously, but he doesn't, he's not utilizing or rallying his troops to demand 
action right now. And frankly, yes, to shame not just Trump, but Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. Where is the pressure from Bernie on Speaker Pelosi? And it's not just Bernie, AOC, Ro Khanna, Rashida Tlaib. Have we learned nothing from the 2020 election and the 2016 election? This playing footsie and being diplomatic with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and Tom Perez is a bridge to nowhere. It is a bridge to nowhere. And Nancy Pelosi, Pelosi is spending more time showcasing her fancy gourmet freezer fill, filled with chocolate ice cream than calling for an immediate moratorium on rent. I'm not talking about a moratorium where we're, we're freezing rent and then when the coronavirus is declared over, okay, then you got to pay it back all in one lump, one lump sum. No, 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 no. I'm calling on canceling rent. You cancel rent, you cancel mortgages, that puts, that takes the onus and the um, shoe off of workers' throats, not just renters and not just mortgage holders, but mortgage issuers. You know, landlords aren't bad people, most of them. They have mortgages to pay too. Bernie, I know you're tired. I'm not going after you like, like Jimmy is and some others that I love them, but I, I wouldn't go that far. But where is the urgency here? Where is the shaming of Nancy Pelosi? Where is the shaming of Joe Biden? Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you. Oh, <laughs>